What's going on guys? It's Thursday and uh, I am in full on uh, scientific mode lately. So we got the turtle in the garage and I've been noticing with this bigger turbo, I turn the boost up and it's not going any faster. It's actually slowing down going down track with more boost. Um, when I went to the track last Friday, the like comparable passes um, I would pick up, let's say 12 mile an hour on the eighth. I'm only picking up six mile an hour on the big end. So that tells me I'm losing a lot of power somewhere. The boost is up. That's cool, but I really don't know what to do. So looking at logs and we're kind of on the theory of it being on the inlet side. So whether it's the air coming in the turbo, that's a restriction or it's the intercooler itself. That's a restriction. So I got a my spare racing beat bumper. Now this used to be on the car before, as you can see here in the fenders, this used to be cut for when I had the fender flares. Um, so that's why I thought the spare bumper I had would actually be easier to fix because I bought that spare bumper in really poor condition. So this bumper has been kind of deemed to be a backup or if I wreck the car, I could use this or whatever have you. So what we are actually going to be doing we're going to be taking this lovely six inch PVC pipe and we are going to put it about there. And that is going to be, you know, connected to the turbo. Now, before everyone gets all pissy, obviously this is not a permanent solution. This is literally cost me nothing. My friend Nick is a plumber by trade. He let me borrow this for the week. Well, I guess have, cause I'll probably end up cutting it up and modifying it. And this bumper, it cost me nothing to have sitting around. So I would rather cut a hole in this one for testing purposes than to destroy my nice and pretty one. So the goal for today, I'm gonna remove my bumper, put this bumper on, make the hole in the center, and basically make the intake come straight through the bumper like so. Because, well, we have all these theories, but Everyone can be a theorist or they can think about stuff all day long on all oh, you need this you need that you need this but I'd rather just jump in and try new things. So without further ado, I'm gonna make a six inch hole in my racing beat bumper. All right, so we got the the good bumper off, and this is the spare crappy bumper. So now we got it fitted. So basically what I want to do is take measurements, pull the bumper back off, take measurements of where the center of the turbine is in comparison to where the bumper right now touches the bottom of the intercooler, like right around there. So I'm going to measure all this, and then we're going to make one single hole wherever it falls and go from there. This is going to be uh, messy and nerve wracking. So I had the bumper off. I measured the center of the wheel in comparison. I made some tape marks on the intercooler. So that line is vertical and I'm going five and a quarter. So I made my dot. So I'm about to send it with a, I would say, I would, I would say a, a big drill bit and we'll see if I was right. Oh, it smells so good. But I know I'm about to be really itchy. Well, the bad news is I totally cut that crooked. But the good news is that's only like an inch and a half hole versus uh, I need a six inch hole. So definitely have a lot more room for error. So I got to figure out what the heck I want to do now about getting this right. Because if you go up in here, you can kind of see where it's going to go. Um, I just got to figure out exactly where it's going to be the best for me to start 
plucking away at this hole because I don't really care about getting it dead accurate as long as I can keep routing out the edges and it's perfect from there. So, I mean, it doesn't even have to be that perfect. It's a spare bumper for goodness sake, but yep, yep, yep. I think we can all agree at the fact that I'm a very uh, terrible YouTuber. So when I get motivated to start doing stuff, I just jump head in and I forgot about the camera. So I started off with a small hole saw, this little guy right here. And then I just kept on making a bunch of holes and then I started trimming it out with that. And well, next thing you know, we got this. <laughs> Clearly, I went a little bit too big here. I mean, it's whatever. So this, my air intake is actually five and a half inch. And then we have a six inch coupler over top of the five and a half, so it's on there. So this being a six inch tube, I would actually be able to use Brian's velocity stack off his ProMod 88. So I think I'm gonna go try to steal his uh, velocity stack. And then we're gonna put the stack on the car and then that should kinda make it look a little bit better. But again, this is only for testing purposes. This isn't, you know, this isn't gonna be the end all be all. Um, this is just so I can get some ideas as to uh, where the hell all my horsepower is going. But, I don't know. I got some boxes in the mail just now, so we will uh, be looking at that later. We're going to be upgrading the fuel system. Yay. So, I think what I'm gonna try to do tonight is uh, we're gonna give a good explanation of what the mods are I'm doing with the transmission. This little guy I'm holding my hand right here. Because I gotta go to Brian's house and we are actually gonna take this on the mill and I wanna machine this flat that way it's basically a flat three bolt flange. So I'm gonna get a hold of Brian tonight to see if I can grab his velocity stack and to see if I can grab his, uh, or use the mill tonight. So I will uh, catch up with you guys in a little while. So after going to Brian's house, I got to play in the middle for a little bit. So this is kind of the final final product. I didn't do this. I, all I did was flatten the bottom. So basically what this is designed for, this is what's called a transmission dump valve. Now I'll insert a photo here of how it, this is designed to be installed. I'm doing it a little bit differently. So on the back side, nothing really matters. The only thing is there's an eighth inch port here and that's where people get their transmission pressures out of if this was bolted onto the transmission, which is why there was that big circle with the O-ring that I actually just machined flat. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna mount this remotely, which means I'm not gonna mount it where it's intended. I'm gonna mount it somewhere on my cross member or somewhere where I have access. Um, so the purpose of it, as you see in the recent videos of me going to this drag strip with the big turbo, it's taking me a while to get up on the two-step. Um, that's caused by having a tight torque converter. The engine has having a hard time accelerating to get up to that certain RPM. So that's why it takes a little while. It needs to start building boost and then the RPMs climb. So the highest I've been up on the trans brake right now is about 4,000 RPM, which is good. Um, I'm actually gonna be leaving a little bit harder tomorrow, hopefully if, it, if I go to the track. Um, but what that is gonna do is that actually takes pressure out of the torque converter allowing the torque converter to slip essentially, which will help it get on the trans brake. So basically I'm going to wire it as an output with the fuel tech. I'm going to have it. So whenever I hit the two step button, it then is now opening the valve. And then when I come to about six pounds of boost, um, it'll close that valve. Um, and yeah, so basically it, it's going to help me spool the car up faster. That's why I got it. So, and then while I was at Brian's, I stole the Velocity stack off the Camaro, which funny enough, this is actually just a speaker box inlet. So anyway, so this is basically what we're working with. I did a terrible job at trimming this hole. 
but this is a six inch coupler with a piece of sewage pipe with a six inch coupler with Brian's velocity stack. And uh, that's about as ram air as you can get. So uh, let me explain what's going on. Now, when we went to the track last week, you know, the car ran phenomenal at 10 pounds of boost. It went 10, not, or 10, seven, 129. I was really happy with how fast it went on such a little boost, but I turned it up to 20 pounds of boost that night and it only went 136 mile an hour. So the question I have is if I just increased nine pounds of boost, why am I not making any real horsepower? You know, I've found people on the internet where they have same turbos, 20 pounds of boost. They're going 150 plus miles an hour in the quarter mile. So there's some sort of issue going on with my car. It's not as fast as it should be realistically. So one thing that I just, I've always been curious about is the turbo being so close to the bumper. I will insert a photo here of what it looks like in relation to my bumper. It is pretty close. I've seen closer, I've seen not as close, but ultimately this is something that I've always wanted to try if it makes a difference. The other thing is, um, is my crazy contraption of an intercooler actually working? So the way we're gonna learn that tomorrow is pressure differential. So obviously I read boost by the manifold air pressure sensor called a MAP sensor. So that's in the intake manifold. So I know how much boost is there, but we don't know how much boost is going into the intercooler and then coming out of the intercooler. So what we're gonna do is when I had this new um, turbo setup done, you can see I have a bung right there on the intercooler pipe right here. And what we're going to do in that line right there, it goes to the bottom of the wastegate. So what I'm going to do is I am essentially going to unplug my back pressure. Now this is just going to be for the one run because I already know the back pressure is good. We don't have to monitor that. So I'm going to unplug this sensor. I'm going to tee in a, another pressure sensor. That way I know the pressure on both sides of the intercooler. Now, this is a suggestion from Brian, so I'm gonna try it. Um, it's pretty easy to do on my car, so it's not gonna take much effort to try it. And at least we have that peace of mind knowing where it could be an issue. So relatively, Brian says, two to three pounds of pressure drop across the intercooler is pretty normal. So as long as it's there, and if it's not you know, five, six pounds, then we're good. So once we determine that my air inlet is helping or not helping, or if it didn't change much, or if we learn that the intercooler doesn't have much of a pressure drop, there's only one more thing that Brian thinks, and he thinks my cam is set retarded. Um, basically when I got my camshaft, I just put it in dead center. Now, whenever you have a factory cam, they're cut perfectly. So you don't have to make adjustments. Anytime you buy an aftermarket cam, they always recommend to degree it because the machining could have been done inaccurately. Essentially, my cam could have actually been machined negative where I would have needed to verify my timing and I would have had to make the adjustment going positive. So that could be it, which would also explain why the car made an, an ass ton of torque early when we had it on the dyno before. It dynoed 803 foot-pounds of torque at 4,300 RPM. But once it got up to the RPM, the power just went straight down and the car falls on its face. So that's, that's consideration, the next consideration. So my plan right now is I'm gonna bolt the car up. I don't feel like putting the lights in, whatever, but this is how the car is going to the track tomorrow night. Um, we are going to run it because I at least need to get 199 pass to finish my license passes. And then uh, hopefully we'll do a little bit of troubleshooting. So basically I'm gonna load it on the same exact tune as it went last week, that 99 at 135. I'm gonna put that exact map in this car. We're gonna run it and we'll see if it goes any faster or any slower based off the data. Um, and then like I said, we're gonna check pressure on both sides of the intercooler and then we are going to, uh... yeah, I don't know. I lost my train of thought, but that's kind of the plan now. So we gotta figure this out. You know, with the 76, the car dyno at 680 on the dyno, um, but the power never translated to the track. The car should realistically be going 150 plus mile an hour. Like I should be hitting my rev limiter in high gear at 160 mile an hour, but the car ain't making the power. It's taking the boost. 
it's got a big turbo on it now. Like, what the hell, man? It should be going faster. But, anyhow. This thing looks pretty sick, though. So, obviously, this is for testing purposes. Now, I will give a spoiler alert. I did order a nice 5.5-inch velocity stack. So, we're going to have one on the, on the nice bumper. Um, it will be cut better, and it will be done up a lot nicer. I promise you that. But, um... It's going to have a stack on the front of it after this. I I think it's going to look pretty cool. <laughs> I've been against it, but I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I know for a fact it's going to pick up some speed tomorrow. Just pure fact that you're ramming air into the turbo. But I don't know if that's necessarily going to fix the problem that I have with the car making nowhere near the power it should be making. But anyhow. You know, that's going to be it from you guys. Like I said, tomorrow uh, the plan is to go to the track. I'm going to have this all buttoned up. And, uh, yep, we're gonna go racing. Weather pending. Please, Florida, don't rain. Anywho, thanks for staying tuned, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate the support, and I will see you in the next one.